Okay. And <clears throat> so this is a short talk to talk about Bonds Island, which was the center of the British slave trade, transatlantic slave trade. And it was where their, their main slave fort was, was located. Um, Bonds Island is a very tiny island off the, uh, in the Sierra Leone estuary. You can see where Freetown, in this map, you can see where Freetown is. And you come really up the, up the estuary, um, you go past Tagreen and there's this Tass Island and you can see this little arrow pointing to a very tiny little bit of island there. It's only 1,600 feet long and um, about, about 35, 350 feet wide at its widest. Uh, this, is, this is a close up of, of it. Um, you can see I've circled where Bonds Island is. It really is very tiny. The big island next to it is Tasso Island, where the original slave fort was located. So Bonds Island, what made it very strategic for the, for the, for the British was that it was at the limits of the ocean going vessels. So to the left of it was where the deep water was and to the right was shallower water. So um, what used to happen is whenever uh, there was, there was fighting between mainly the French and the British. The French would actually come down the coast and, and come up the river and, and attack Bonds Island. So uh, the slave fort was rebuilt six times, um, four times because it was destroyed by the French and once by pirates and I think one, once by the Dutch. But what used to happen is the ships would be off on the deep side and once um, um, the 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 fort was attacked, the British would then gather all their goods and valuables and take shallower boats that would take them across on the shallower water to the, to the hinterland on this side, to the lands below. And then once the, the attack was done, they'd come back and then they would rebuild. So this is, Bonds Island was actually <clears throat> used from about 1617, 1670 to 1808, when slavery was abolished. This is one of the first drawings of Bonds Island. It has gone by several names. It was called Ben's Island. It was called Bans Island. It was called George Island. Uh, but this is one of the first uh, uh, um, drawings of, of Bonds Island. And you can see the slave fort that is there. This was around 1720. This is what the fort looked like. Um, and here's another image showing <coughs> showing the fort uh, with the British flag there. It, it was, for the first, the first two owners were, were really folks from the, from the British crown. Um, and then it went into private businesses that were supported by the British government. Anyway, so this is, this is, this is a drawing of, of the fort. You can see the cannons that were used mainly for defensive purposes. Um, and then this is, this is a later drawing. This is actually an 1800 drawing, but it really is an embellishment of what the fort was like. And the reason we know that is because this was drawn after <coughs> the ruins that are there uh, um, you know, were built. So you'll see what I'm talking about later, but typically what happened was they brought the enslaved Africans down onto the jetty. They put them on these small boats and then they whisked them off to these larger ships that were the ocean going vessels. So this was, this was the operation at, at Bonds Island. And the main reason uh, uh, Bonds Island was so important was the British had also, you know, also had settled in, in the United States and in the, uh, along the Eastern seaboard, one of the main things they did was a lot of the uh, slave Africans from Sierra Leone were brought directly to South Carolina and Georgia and to some parts of, of, of Florida. So this was a journey that used to take about six weeks at the, at the time. And, you know, this image just actually shows the, the expanse of, of what, you know, how they had to travel. And the main reason Sierra Leone became an important location for transshipping, as I would say, uh, enslaved Africans was really this, it was because of rice. Rice was being grown in, in South Carolina and, um, and Georgia, and it was a very difficult crop. But in Sierra Leone, 
and even what, what was called the West, the rice coast, which stretched from Senegal to Liberia, um, rice had been grown for hundreds of years. So they knew these Africans knew how to, to grow rice. So this was, this was the main reason that, that Sierra Leone became the hub of the British slave trade. And this is what they, you know, body was transformed to once it got to South Carolina. In fact, the, the Charleston was the richest city in America for about a hundred years, primarily because of all this rice, rice plantations. So, you know, Africans from Sierra Leone region especially were, were very valued.